and livestock production is extremely important to both the economy and the environment in Iowa. Iowa currently ranks 10th in the nation in the number of beef cows, 9th in the number of dairy cows, and 10th in the number of stock ewes. These three ruminant species convert plant material into high quality milk, meat, and fiber. All of these value-added products provide jobs and valuable support for Iowa's economy. With the beef, dairy, and sheep industries combined, a total of nearly 86,000 jobs and a personal income of well over $3 billion are added to Iowa's economy. These jobs are found on farms and in various service industries, such as feed companies, companies providing pharmaceutical and biological services, farm equipment dealers, as well as transportation. Meat and milk processing from slaughter to prepackaged retail portions also provide large numbers of jobs to Iowa's economy. While ruminants are a valuable asset to Iowa as a whole, the economic impact of grazing these livestock can be very large on individual operations as well. Enterprise records show that the single largest expense to produce meat, milk, and fiber is the cost of feed. As agriculture moves into a more global market, livestock producers will need to compete with their neighbors down the road as well as across the sea. Utilizing standing forage and harvesting it with grazing animals will improve the competitiveness of Iowa's producers long into the future. In addition, grazing land will continue to rise in value as more uses compete for this limited resource. Iowa is blessed with an abundance of high quality land. However, much of Iowa's land is not suited to continuous row crop production. In reality, some of this highly erodible land, if row cropped, would lose over half its topsoil within 10 years. Ruminants are ideal for integrating diverse farm operations because they can harvest roughage and turn it into high value products. Significant benefits to be gained by incorporating pasture and hay into a row crop farming operation include reduced soil erosion from wind and water, reduced non-point source pollution, improved wildlife habitat for nesting and shelter, improved water quality, and a general improvement in agricultural sustainability. It's important to remember that Iowa's soil resource is limited and competitors also include urbanization and recreation. As agriculture moves into the 21st century, it's important for producers to develop and implement plans that allow them to be competitive with the various international trade agreements already signed by the federal government. Current and future agreements will have ongoing impacts on the profitability of individual producers. The importance of the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trades, along with the North American Free Trade Agreement, may be far-reaching in the profitability and competitiveness of ruminant livestock producers. In many situations, ag producers have not made full use of their pasture and forage resources. Unlike row crop production, which normally includes intensive management and high inputs, pasture management and overall pasture productivity have lagged behind. With the advent of new technology electric fences, forage producers now have the ability to intensively manage their pasture resources as well. Controlled grazing is not without its disadvantages. Producers must realize that it will require an initial investment in fencing and watering equipment for the grazing animals. Generally, this initial capital outlay for fence materials can be recovered quickly. A second disadvantage of controlled grazing is the time commitment required to maintain fences, to monitor the growth rate and forage availability of the various paddocks, and to rotate animals to the appropriate new paddocks at the correct time. In operations which are already heavily labor intensive, controlled grazing may not be a feasible management change. The greatest disadvantage of controlled grazing is that it requires a mental commitment on the part of the producer to make the system work. In many cases, the expertise to appropriately operate an intensive grazing program is learned through experience. This can create some difficulties in the early stages of intensive grazing systems. However, the advantages of controlled grazing generally outweigh the disadvantages. These advantages include increased production from pastures resulting from adequate rest and increased plant recovery and vigor between periods of grazing. Once producers establish control, 
forage quality, along with quantity, can be drastically increased. With this increased forage quality and availability, animal performance generally improves, both in terms of reproduction as well as growth rates of their young. The greatest advantage in many situations, especially with animals that are highly selective grazers, such as sheep, is that intensively managed pastures do not allow excess selectivity by the grazing animal. Animals are similar to humans in that they have preferred plants that they eat, and if not given adequate rest, these plants eventually will die out of the pasture stand. In many cases, these plants are the most productive pasture species. As we lose plant diversity, we also lose productivity, while we gain invader species like weeds and brush. Another advantage of a rotational grazing system would be manure distribution and nutrient recycling within the pasture. Animals are moved on a more regular basis and do not establish consistent bedding grounds where an excessive amount of fecal material is deposited. Animals are easier to manage and handle because they routinely are exposed to humans. The animals are in a much smaller confined area and therefore easier to monitor in terms of health status or inventory monitoring. The ideal situation in Iowa would be to have a 365-day growing season. We all know this is not the case, so we must incorporate the varied growing seasons into our controlled grazing program. Most cool season grasses have a very rapid growth phase in May and June, and a depressed growth phase in July and August. It's possible, therefore, under intensive pasture systems, to harvest and conserve some hay off of a proportion of paddocks early in the growing season. In most cases, this works out well with the stocking rate as spring calves and lambs are small and are consuming very little forage. These paddocks harvested for hay can then be incorporated into the rotational grazing program during July and August when pasture growth is at a slower rate. The economics of developing and implementing an intensive grazing system will vary from operation to operation. Paddock size is one factor that impacts the potential economic return. Remember, as paddock size decreases, fencing costs increase. A second major impact on the economic return will involve the water system. Will it be best to provide fresh water in each paddock, or will animals need to be trailed to a central water source? The long-term objective of all intensive grazing systems should be to provide water in each paddock. The average cost of materials for subdividing an 80-acre pasture into 10 paddocks using a single strand of 12.5 gauge high tensile wire would be approximately $800. These costs will increase as the number of wires within the fence increases and as paddock size decreases. The cost of a water system can vary greatly depending on whether an above ground or buried line system is used. A water system does not necessarily have to cost a lot of money if an adequate source of reliable water already exists. The economic returns for implementing an intensive grazing system will depend on the levels of increased productivity achieved through better forage quality and quantity available to the producing animals. Additionally, one must include the hay harvested during the early portion of the grazing season as an income source for calculating the return on the investment. The rate of return also depends on the animal species being fenced. Sheep have a slightly higher cost per acre because they require multiple strands of wire per barrier. Two additional factors must be considered when figuring economic returns the improvement in the longevity of newly seeded pastures, and secondly, if plant diversity is maintained in part with legumes, fertilization costs will be reduced because of the need for lower nitrogen inputs. In many parts of the world, such as New Zealand and Great Britain, where land costs are high and environmental conditions allow for high grass productivity, intensely grazed pastures are the norm and not the exception. In most cases, due to the limited forage resource, producers try to reap maximum outputs from that resource. Grazing systems in southern Iowa, can, I feel, can be very competitive with corn bean rotations, especially because of the SES requirements we have for highly erodible lands. These type systems will work very well with the soil loss problem. 
There are a number of benefits to rotational grazing as we see it. One, it's low cost, or it requires little capital to get started and to maintain it. It's environmentally sound in the sense that we're not eroding soil on our land because we, it's, it's all in grass. Uh, our cows stay very clean during the pasture season. They come in with very clean teats. We tend to have few incidences of mastitis that way, so I, I believe we're probably producing quality, better quality milk than we would otherwise because of the cleanliness of the cows. Uh, I think that's the, those are the main reasons. Environmental quality, low cost, and actually a very good quality of life because my wife and I enjoy working with cows on pasture and that's probably the most important thing. If you're going to make money in the sheep business, that's where you're going to make it is, is by utilizing uh, all your resources and letting the sheep do the work. Uh, I'm not a big fan of, of baling hay and hauling it to them and feeding them, although we have to do that, you know. But the more we can, the more we can have the sheep do on their own, uh, the better off we are.